in project 4.3 in the textbook, you're told to go to the UNET boot-in website at sourceforge.net and you're going to download this uh, program and set up on your computer a way that you can create a bootable flash drive. Just follow the instructions on the, the page. It tells you to come here and they click download for Windows. So do this. Click there. And once you come here, it says your download will start in just a few seconds. And so we see the download starting. Depending on the speed of your network, it may take just a few minutes. I'm doing all of my work on a Windows 8 computer on a 64-bit machine. And, so, and I'm doing the download here in the Chrome browser. So it shows me my download here in the lower left-hand corner. But you could also just open up the Windows Explorer. This is called the File Explorer or just Windows Explorer. And I've got this open so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, in my Downloads folder, you can see here's the UNIT boot in uh, file. And that's the one I'm going to click on here to install the, the program. Double click. If you get a message to say install it or not, just click yes. And that's it. That's all it takes to install the UNET boot in program because it does not actually install like a regular program. You'll have to go back to that exe file and click it to go through that installation process every time you want to use this. Now the book says to come down and click where it says disk image and make sure that it's selected here an ISO if you've downloaded the ISO file. And then it tells you to click on the button with three dots to go and find that file. Well, before I do that, I want to just pull these out of the way and show you what I've, I've got to work with here. On my computer, in my, in my uh, disk drive, which is my drive H, I have an ISO file that I downloaded for Backtrack 5. So this is Backtrack 5 GNOME 32-bit, and it's the ISO file. And then I also have a flash drive, Kingston flash drive, in my uh, iDrive. So just make sure that you have your flash drive already plugged into your computer. And you can have your ISO file either as a download that's on your computer uh, that you downloaded straight to your computer. It wouldn't have to be then in the optical drive like this one is. It could just be up here in Downloads but make sure that you have an ISO file that you can install to that flash drive. So I'm going to come here in the unit boot in program, ISO file, click the three dots. I'm going to go find that file, which I know is in my optical drive. I'm going to click on the ISO file and then click open. Now under type, I want to make sure that it's a USB drive. And my drive here is in drive I. Confirm that. Make sure you're right. The drive I is the drive for the Kingston uh, flash drive. So we'll just move that out of the way. Move, make sure it goes to my I drive. So notice what I said. We're not doing anything up here at all. Down here under disk image, ISO file. Make sure it's looking at and it has entered the path and everything of the ISO file. Make sure USB drive is collected here so that you don't install this to your hard drive. It's going to be a USB drive. Make sure you have the drive ID for the flash drive that you've got installed and simply click OK. And it's going to go through this process of setting up boot track onto that flash drive. It's actually a very fast procedure. After you click OK then the unit boot in program begins to install the ISO image, all of the files that are in the ISO image, onto the flash drive. All right, that took about four or five minutes. And here we are after everything's installed on the flash drive. It tells us to uh, installation's complete, reboot. I am going to reboot, uh, but I'll have to stop the recording here. Uh, I'm using a program that captures uh, the audio and video on my uh, computer. And what it's wanting me to do is to reboot the computer. And of course, with that flash drive plugged in, then when I reboot the computer, the computer is going to boot up into 
Backtrack, uh, just like a, you've you've seen other installations of Backtrack. So Backtrack would take over this computer, and I wouldn't be able to do any sort of screen recording. If I want, by the way, if you do that, how are you going to get screenshots? Well, just use uh, like a camera on a cell phone or something, and just take pictures of your screen, and then import those pictures, copy and paste them into a uh, a Word document. So this is the way, though, that you use Unit Boot In uh, to install backtrack keep in mind that unit boot in is only a program that is used uh, to take the ISO image that you have off of a disk or off of a download file and to put it on a flash drive that's all that unit boot in does and the backtrack download is very large it takes a long time to get it and that's why I have it on an ISO file on a uh, on a uh, DVD uh, because it is so large and I can just carry it around and, and do it from time to time whenever I need to. But this is the way that you do it in a way that you create that flash drive. Now, when I click re, uh, Reboot Now, then I'm going to actually shut down the computer and take the USB drive out and, uh, and not actually boot the computer up into it. But you could do that, just reboot and let it go straight into the, uh, the program.